situation is as follows when you go for IP protection, which is completely different of what we have discussed currently of authorities granting access. IP protection is under civil law and allows the company um, to protect its right under civil law. Um, but IP protection requires two things for a patent. You once need to have an invention and you need to have novelty. And usually nowadays um, in relation to clinical research, um, when, you have an, um, when you have an invention, in order that it's accepted, accepted as invention, you need to show some data. And in the pharmaceutical industry, usually research data are used to back up an invention. But nowadays, before you start with the study, you have already to upload um, your, your approach in the study and according to the new law, also the study protocol in the EU database. So you have to upload the data first and then you do the study. And at the moment you have uploaded um, the data, the novelty has gone. So for IP protection in the future, if you need the clinical research data for the invention, you will lose because you cannot make the novelty. You have to upload the data first uh, or, the, or the idea first and then it's no, no more novel. And um, in the US it's different because there is one year grace period which helps a lot in the US and this grace period is not available under EU patent law but it's currently severely discussed. So that's the difference but I think that now really moves far away from okay. um, the topic into intellectual <laughs> property right. Okay. Right, so Jacques, I want to give you an opportunity. Uh, yeah, and I have a question, please. Yes, but Jacques, for yeah, a while. Thank you, Mr. Speak. Chairman. And um, then after that. I think the discussion is always about, uh, the, the, the discussion about uh, monopolies and so on is always driven towards the, the solutions at the authorities level. And I think we have a good model for uh, making it clear that it is possible also on the company's level. Um, we created four years ago Med Remedy Bank. Now Remedy Bank will make the, the, the stocks, the, the raw materials and the fresh plants, but also the, the tinctures and the chemicals for starting materials. Now Remedy Bank was seen by some people as an, an, a monopoly or as an, a danger for the market. Remedy Bank is a cooperation. Remedy Bank is an open structure, anyone. Anyone, a doctor, a pharmacist, a company, a, an association of patients, can become shareholder, can become in, enter in the capital. We have a shareholder here in the room, AJ. So, I mean, this is an example of how we can avoid a lot of research and a lot of, a lot of work that is unnecessary. If we, if we can join forces on the level of the raw materials or the starting materials, and we have joint dossiers, the registration can uh, go much more quick. We can save a lot of money. How many, how many money is yearly spent on, this, on the research of a thin layer chromatogram of, of the same substance with different countries uh, or different companies? So why don't we join forces on all these levels? You, you mentioned the, the proofings, and one of the elements in proofing is that you have the same starting material to compare two proofings. Well, the solution is there. Huh? And you can do the same, the same not only with the starting materials, but you can do the same with the proofings, with the clinical trial, whatever. So join forces, create a joint company, and, and do the work together. That's harmonization. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a gentleman uh, at the back. The, the, maybe first a gentleman who uh, spoke about his uh, new drug development. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Though I'm I'm not a legal expert to opine on IPR, but I have first-hand experience in IPR in several countries. So uh, I would like to say that proving is not considered as an evidence or support of innovation because proving does not signify the efficacy of the medicine as believed by many homeopaths. Because anybody can make a proving that does not say that it is the efficacy of the medicine. It only shows the effect of the medicine and not the efficacy. There's a difference. And on the ground of proving, a couple of my patents have been rejected in several places. Uh, what is required is innovation and novelty and a new idea. There's another point which I need to bring to your notice is that sometimes 
it also matters on the mood and the understanding of the investigational officer. In the US, one of the patents that I, we had filed around a few years back was rejected only because the investigating officer was not convinced of the homeopathy idea. And he believed that homeopathy is all nothing and it is placebo. And, and after about one year, the officer changed <laughs> and, the, and the patent was granted. So this also is important factor to be noted. One more question pertaining to patents. Uh, some people have a feeling that once a patent is granted, and if the, or rather if the medicine is entered in the pharmacopoeia, then patent is broken and anybody can copy that product, which I believe legally it is not true. So even you can have a patented homeopathic medicine, an IPR protected homeopathic medicine in the pharmacopoeia and still retaining the rights on that particular innovation. Thank you. Um, okay, just if this is uh, just a brief comment because then we want to move on to the harmonization. If it's for a quick, quick question. Uh, I'm Dr. Mohan Sundaram. I'm a pharmacologist from Chennai. I have a faculty in a medical college. Uh, I'm incidentally the governing body member of the CCRH, and I also associated with Indian Pharmacopoeia of uh, the Ayurveda and Siddha earlier. My, I'd like to make one or two points regarding the clinical trials. Uh, the ICMR is giving even the student uh, uh, ship, even at the time of second year onwards, some 10,000 rupees given during their vacation time. They do, can do April, May, some uh, short study like that. That is, they are sensitizing MBBS students to take up research at that uh, stage itself. So if any project is done, either uh, makes ICMR to give such a project for students in medical colleges, or whether Ayush or CHR, anybody, uh, anybody takes responsibility and initiates such activities, the students will be sensitized at the, when they are doing their course, uh, whatever may be, Bachelor of Medicine in Siddha, Ayurveda, Unani, Homeopathy. So that is one of the things you can try. Because now there is lack of initiation in research at the practicing doctor's level because they are not sensitized to do any research at all. Even then, many of the, uh, see, we are morning we are discussing, one of the eminent doctor told, he tried even 50 years old a tincture, which was very effective. But whether he has published it or documented it, that's what, documentation is very much lacking among the practitioners in Indian systems of medicine. If it is there, if improved uh, documentation, then it will form uh, this thing, so that this thing. So we can uh, sensitize the st at student level itself to take up projects and uh, it can you. be. Thank you for your comment. Mm. You probably not don't know that in CCRH also on the lines of ICMR, we have the same scheme mm. and we are doing the same. Uh, we do have. Uh, how many so projects you are doing? But you would like to say on IPR issues if you have anything to say. Uh, I would like you to suppose we move on yeah. to the harmonization now That's because true. we're running out of time. Um, okay, so thank you. Uh, so I would like to suggest now to move to the topic of harmonization uh, uh, and yeah, to which extent should we harmonize, maybe in what domains? Uh, I think Dr. Breitkreutz um, made a very eloquent presentation where he introduced some sort of differentiation that maybe for safety is more useful and for um, efficacy is less. So, uh, yeah, please, what are the thoughts and comments with regard to this? Okay. Dr. Kurana. Yeah. Uh, regarding harmonization, I think jo uh, uh, Hendricks also pointed out for remedy bank. That is one part of that at the raw drug material level. The second point can be the preparation methods. When we develop medicines, we use different kind of potentizers. And there are so many varieties. One of company may be doing Corsacovian, another is doing Honeyman method. And what is the difference between these two? Whether the clinical efficacy differs because of these two kind of potentizers, the physical properties of those liquids of initial you may not find physical properties change at the potency levels at higher level, but you may find physical level at initial stage. That needs to be found out. This is one part of harmonization. The percentage of alcohol is being used differently in different countries. In India, we are using pills for dispensing and not because 91% alcohol at a dispensing level 
In, I think, European countries, they are 70 percent, even some countries, 40 percent. So they are using liquids more. And the extractive values of these from the mother tinctures, if you have 91 percent alcohol, you are extracting more of alcohol soluble alkaloids. And they are going down into the higher potencies as you raise the potencies. In 40% of alkyl, you have 60% of water. You are extracting hydro, aqueous products more. So these may produce some kind of a change at the epic, clinical efficacy level, at the drug proving level. So these needs to be discussed and standardized at initial level. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, regarding harmonization, it may be possible for the medicines which are having, which are have, which are undergoing drug proving. There are large number of medicines which are used in homeopathy, large number of products which are used in homeopathy, where drug proving is not used, like the combinations, formulations which we mentioned. Once we come for regulations and trying for harmonization, the major chunk of the product which is in the market is the one which is not having any drug proving. That is the, those are the products which are bringing bad name to the homeopathy also. So immediately there should be some step or some strategy to segregate those who are undergoing truck proving and uh, standardized, harmonized, and the other one which are being marketed in different countries, in different labels and different names. In some countries, products are prepared and marketed to the other countries which are not being used in those countries, only for commercial values. These are the things which are uh, immediately to be attended, some sort of a strategy, how to regulate those medicines which are not undergoing clinical trials or drug proving, whatever it is. Second, another one more, one more point, Chairman. Is there any way, any possibility of having a common platform to share information on these uh, pharmacopoeial standards which are there? There are there some of the pharmacopoeia that Brazil has got, Mexico has got, India has got, Germany has got, France has got, Britain has got, USA has got. But the information sharing between these countries is not there. So what is happening there, we share only in such platforms where we meet once in a while. If there is a common platform, either on uh, in any of the organizations, councils, or anything, so it's other, will, other person will come to know what is happening in the other country on homeopathic pharmacopoeia. So at least set up some common platform and also decide on how to regulate the products which are not undergoing the drug proving. Can we have a proposal of co uh, International Committee on Homeopathy Harmonization? From representations from various countries? Can we have a recommendation of that kind of? Uh, well, that's not, that's for all of us to decide, but I think it's a good question. So, uh, um, would he want to comment yeah. on that? Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Joseph. I recently taken over the charge as a director, Homeopathy Pharmacopoeia Laboratory, that is an apex body uh, for making the standardizations, uh, quality control of the homeopathy medicine. As Dr. Ishwar Das, who is a long associate of Ministry of Ayush, has rightly said, sir, actually, just uh, past a few days, we have initiated the work what you have actually raised, uh, that all the monographs like uh, the uh, United States Pharmacopoeia, Homeopathy Pharmacopoeia, and the German Homeopathy Pharmacopoeia, just now what we just initiated is, just initiated is that, just to have what are the plans covered and what are the quality parameters covered. Because even the WHO, if you see, uh, in uh, one their book that safety issues in the preparation of the homeopathy medicine, they have openly came up and mentioning the uh, different standards, uh, actually the quality standards mentioned in the different pharmacopoeia. So what you rightly said is correct that if you have a harmonization and if you have the data at one place so that then it will be useful for the harmonization and it will be, it will be useful for the uh, further making of the solidifying the unified monograph. So in towards this direction, we are just started feeding the data. Hopefully soon, with the help of CCRH, we will uh, come up with one platform, probably in a portal on this particular this thing, and then we will share the data, and then maybe then this further course of action can be taken up. Thank you. 
typical in nature where monographs are available. What I was talking is those products which are in the market where there is no monograph being simply prepared and marketed. That is the one which is doing more. Okay, but so maybe can I pick up because I really want to keep the level not at a technical point now. This is now the point where we gradually need to see, can we work towards a helicopter view uh, on what, we're, what we've learned and experienced and from that helicopter view develop some, some outlook? Christian. This, this harmonization issue is really a, a delicate thing, and you have introduced this, uh, Robert, in, with, your, with the right words, balancing, um, <coughs> balancing diversity with, with points coming together, uh, which you can harmonize or streamline more. And in my experience uh, with, uh, in this sector, it's very much a question of how quick do you want to do something? So the timeline, somebody may be overruled or a standard be left out, being neglected. And the crucial issue of legitimacy, because a sustainable harmonized standard is where there is a really a sub, uh, substantial consensus. So I, I, I'm not too clear about this question, but I find uh, the idea of uh, Dr. Uh, does quite relevant that I've experienced that we shared a lot of information, but there is still a lot of asymmetry in information. So a first step may be to, to share more focused where are, what do we know about pharmacopoeia today, about provings today from the different cultures, that's to bridge the information gap, that we don't come to a harmonization too quickly, that is then at the end not a real harmonization. And I don't want to block this, but uh, I myself, I, in, in, in quite a lot of presentations, I had question marks, not because I found the presentation bad, but I realized that I have a substantial information asymmetry. Okay, thank you. Um, Emil. May I, may I uh, say a few things uh, briefly based on, on experience we have uh, in, in Europe, but it are my personal views. <coughs> on harmonization, I think that it is an excellent idea to share the information and the experience the different pharmacopoeias have. I think that it is unique that India brought together all parts of the world which have a homeopathic pharmacopoeia or pharmacopoeia addressing homeopathic matters. That has never been before, I think. We should not let go this chance. Um, talking about harmonization from, from the regular point of view, I would not start to try to harmonize what is difficult we should start to harmonize what is easy. Because there are difficult, difficult issues in the global situation for homeopathic medicines and homeopathy, but that will block anything. We must uh, try to find a common understanding about what is the good quality of a belladonna tincture. And that can be according to different pharmacopoeias, different parts of the world, but at least we must uh, share what is good quality of uh, the most used uh, tinctures and then go on. And one thing about the, uh, the understandable discussion about patents and the protection of data, that is a discussion from the 20th century. We are living in the 21st century. If you have children, ask your children for them all information is already available anywhere, and it is free. So within 10 years, all the results of clinical data, that discussion is now already going on for, for regular medicines, all information will be freely available and in open source. And I think that that is the only chance we have. And Last thing, homeopathy was very modern in its time because that is the only therapy who 200, since 200 years uh, 
all the information is already in uh, an open share and open source. So 200 years ago, homeopathy was already very modern. Thank you for the variable comments. Uh, can I, uh, I will, for, first I want to give to Thomas Breitkois because I think he wants to say something on a similar uh, topic and then I'll pass on to you. No, I think it is absolutely wise to start uh, with what we have and to make it accessible. Of course, sometimes it's a question of language. Yeah, that material is there, but it is not in English, for example. Um, and I think there it is wise to collect first on the safety issues and then compare and then find out what could be a common standard. On the other hand, this is a question, what, what is the most easy thing to do? On the other hand, what is the most necessary thing to do? For me, it is quite clear that we need a stronger proof of evidence uh, for, for the treatments. And so this is not a quick, a quick win, if you want, but it's something which really has to start. And I was really uh, very inspired of your both uh, presentation, how to do that in combination with what, what Harald Hamro was telling us. And I feel to work on a methodology which is not only a question of regulation, it is science and regulation and self-understanding how we learn within our systems. Yeah? We, we do not just evaluate to show to regulators that they have some material, but we need it ourselves to learn how can we get better within the therapy. And, and this question, how to evaluate and how to compare, to compare effectiveness, for example, uh, between different systems and within different systems, this is a major question because the, the conventional approach, one single drug, one indication, one or two RCTs doesn't work if we treat more individualized. And for this topic, I really feel it is time to start a, 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 a sound a scientific a process to see what can be done to solve this question, which is a general question for, for, for lots of therapeutic systems. But so are you proposing harmonization or more collaboration in this domain? Yeah, harmonization in this, in this field would mean not to collect what is there, but to do a common effort um, that, uh, resulting in creating something which will be there in the next 10 years. Yeah. So it's more uh, um, collecting activities, leading and, and discourse, leading to something which could be a common standard in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want to say something? Yes. I would just like to add in this conversation uh, the issue of harmonization. Uh, World Health Organization, in its view on conventional medicines and traditional medicines, the larger view uh, is moving towards convergence in the regulatory world and reliance. So the word harmonization per se, even in this part of the world, is not, uh, not the, the most uh, uh, you know, apt or ap appropriate word. And the world, the, the world basically in the World Health Organization most recently revised or more frequently used is convergence and reliance on the regulatory authorities on each other, et cetera. And I agree fully with the, our Netherlands colleague uh, on moving with the things which are a little simple to begin with, for example, pharmacopoeia. You know, we have uh, the monographs, we have uh, impurities, uh, reference substances. So there could be a model of reliance or uh, collaboration, a close cooperation model, established uh, so, so that we could move uh, you know, in a more converged manner uh, um, among several countries on this. And as part of this, one of the key uh, areas which WHO has focused on is good pharmacopoeial practices, uh, good regulatory practices, and good review practices. So among the first one, the good pharmacopoeial practices, this draft is already in the expert committee on, on pharmaceutical specifications, and it, uh, it actually covers a lot of principles on the pharmacopoeial convergence and reliance, which we, we were just, it was being discussed. So it would be a good draft to begin with, and if the World Forum could take it up and you know, uh, take it further in form of what our colleagues suggested, you know, in form of working groups, uh, down the year, maybe in the subsequent forums of the World Integrated Forum, 
Uh, so for you're saying that the WHO, you're, you're interested in keeping an engagement in this dialogue and maybe the WHO can provide the framework for some of, some of these activities? Yes, this is already existing as part of the good pharmacopoeial practices. Uh, quite a lot of this discussion has covered in the text of the good pharmacopoeial okay. practices. All right, thank yes. you, that's very thank valuable. You. Just one more uh, from uh, yeah. Dr. Ord, and then we're going to have to round up, I'm afraid. But <laughs> uh, just, just a really uh, short, short remark. Um, just to um, disappoint you, um, Ms. Gupta, um, uh, harmonization in pharmacopoeia is not easy and, and, and <laughs> uh, 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 fast. Yeah? Uh, we, we have the experience in Europe. I think we, have, we make good progress, yeah, really. We, we are all uh, trying to, to find good common solutions for Europe, but it's not easy and it's not fast. <laughs> um, but, but it's uh, necessary. And just a, a second uh, information, um, it really we should keep it easy, easy going. I have to support all. Um, uh, when we are starting with, with such critical points like, like mother tinctures or like, like how to potentize uh, the homeopathic community is not united so far. So I, I wouldn't start with this point, just a simple example. Uh, as you know, we have this, this huge amount of, of APIs, uh, over 1,000, and, and 600 of these are just plant materials made in Germany, so to speak, from our own plantations. But also there we got over 40 years expertise on this ground. We, we are uh, discovering that pharmacognosy is not, not fitting right, yeah? that we have to adapt, that we have to develop. Yeah? So we have really to start from the scratch, um, with the starting materials, yeah, we have to be clear in this way, and then we can go on and go on, and, and uh, there will be the future. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, just that brings me to the, maybe this very po third point. If we, if we are feeling that it will be useful to harmonize at certain levels, in terms of strategic priorities for harmonization, uh, which is the third theme for which we now have only five minutes, uh, what would be the biggest strategic priority or the low-hanging fruit that we could say, well, it, this is where we can make relatively quick wins that will give us the confidence to tackle the more complicated ones. Uh, what are the views on that or are, are there any views on that? First of all, that we can instead of talking of more of harmonization like let us be more aligned with who nomenclature let us see whether we can converge over pharmacopias which is possible to some extent so that can be the very easy thing to start but with but it's going to be very difficult because but e even be within europe they didn't manage no, no, to the converge point is, the point is not that you have to converge all the pharmacopia monographs at least one monograph five monograph 20 monograph which are most frequently used in homeopathic practice. Because if we analyze homeopathic practice, I have seen with 40, 50, and 60 medicine, majority of the people are practicing in most part of the... So at least those 50 drugs, those first 100 drugs can be standardized, where conver we can all converge on one type of monograph and let that be the beginning point. I, this is how strategically, I think, it's very important. Uh, Todd, do you want to comment on this specifically? Yes. So I think if you're going to work on the pharmacopoeias, what you're going to end up doing is identifying the differences that are in irreconcilable. So I don't think that leads to a harmonization effort. On the other hand, we have had some experience with the proving efforts, which have led to harmonization of provings, at least in the US and Europe. So I think this might be an area of, of low-hanging fruit. The second area, I think, that could lead to some cooperation across different pharmacopoeias and across different countries and across companies is the issue of toxicology. So it seems like every pharmacopoeia has to have their own toxico toxicological experts in plants, in animal species, in minerals. So you need expertise in all of these areas. And for me, we have all have the same needs. They're not different needs. They're all the same needs. So how can we leverage expertise in different countries to come together around toxico you know, toxicology issues? And then the last area is one that maybe the World Health Organization can help us with, which is pharmacovigilance. Right now, you have pharmacovigilance happening country by country, not even country by country, but really company by company. <laughs> so how can we collate data together to create greater 
denominators in a way to really understand the levels of safety that are involved in homeopathy. We believe it's very safe. The, the, this is a little less low-hanging fruit because I think the identification of, of adverse events and ADRs and homeopathy varies tremendously according to regions and according to countries. So this would be a kind of a, a less easy process. But those two, I think, would be the starting points. All right. Can Thank I say you. something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Uh, see, I think uh, you know, combining or bringing out with a common pharmacopoeia. I'm not using the word which, as Dr. Madhu suggested, is a good idea. But we'll have to remember the kind of challenges we'll be face will be very intricate details. For example, like you take the same plant as Dr. Manchanda suggested, many pharmacopias have different.